you don't know if you can directly direct. I think the most important thing when you're directing is perspective on the story. What is your take? What are you saying? What does it mean? I think that's what you need. Everything else, it just comes. Yeah. Zoya, I saw Luck by Chance again and loved it even more this time. Uh, Thank you. I just feel like there's such a deep love for the film industry, but there's also such a deep understanding of how cruel showbiz is and how it just sucks your soul and makes you into someone maybe that you're not. Um, where did this story originate? I think when you when you start writing, you, you know, you're in that phase when you want to write a movie and you're in your 20s and you start writing things that you know and things that are close to you. How old were you when you first started? Well, I started toying with it like at 25. I actually wrote it when I was 26 or 27. Okay. But I had many ideas. This is the one that saw the end, you know. Weirdly, it just, it just came out. It just, I, it just flowed with it. it. It was interesting to me. Uh, in terms of, I mean, of course, I love the film industry and uh, it's uh, quirky and it's eccentric and it's it's a wonderful place to be. But at the same time, it's got its own uh, code and its own, you know, ethics and morals and it's got it's got its own code. Yeah. And I was at a party. It's a tribe. Yeah. And I was at a party and there were, I was with a bunch of actors, uh, male actors, and they were discussing another actor. One of them said... Uh, he won't make it. Uh, he's too content. You know, and they all responded to the word content like it was very bad. You know? <laughs> and I was like, but isn't contentment A good thing. the ultimate thing anyway? Right. I mean, if you're content, then do you really care if your film is a hit? Because you're already content. You, it's zen like. Yeah. And everyone looked at me like, you know, this art picture You know what I mean? They were just like, please spare us this philosophy, this existential crisis in the middle of this party. It was literally like that. So it came from there? It came from there and it was true because it was like the whole concept of success and failure is warped. In the industry, it's warped. It's defined by other people. You know, there's no, you suddenly have, you have a loss of who you are, what you are and what you're achieving and striving. I mean, I want to be happy. I want to be satisfied. I want my life to be whatever. Cut to, I'll open a newspaper and I'm like, oh, I'm doing really well. You know, I'm making movies. I wanted to be a filmmaker and I'm, I am a filmmaker. That's successful, I think. Anybody who sets out to do something and actually does it is a success. Then you'll get a newspaper and be like, her film only made this much money. Then somebody else will say, that person's film made that much more money. That person has that bigger star. That so you're just like, oh, so I'm not that successful. I'm, suddenly I'm, I'm being defined by everything around me, which is very particular to our industry. Those were the things that led to making this. And uh, basically you and how you view yourself and how that your self-esteem does that have any bearing on your future, on your destiny, you know? How you shape it. Yeah, and I mean, and this is kind of before that law of attraction and all came in. So maybe I was on to something because frankly, it is what you think. You make your destiny, you know. That was where the film came from. And there were two different characters and uh, two different philosophies of life and two different um, views of self, you know, with Konkana and Farhan's characters. But so it took you seven years to finally make the film. And for a while it was shelved and you were writing Kisma talkies. Um, the, all these actors would said no to being the character uh, yeah. Vikram that Farhan played. Yeah. Uh, at that time, in these, I mean, seven years is a long time, right? In this time, did you ever sort of doubt your own creative voice or what you wanted to put out there? I didn't doubt it to change it. Like, I mean, luckily, I don't know how, but I think the fact that I was very cocky really helped me. I'm not so cocky anymore. You know what I mean? But you were very cocky then? Yeah, weirdly. I had done nothing and I had 
a lot of attitude you know which i now don't have had <laughs> but at that time i did but i think i survived because of uh, that because of it you know because i never felt like there was anything wrong uh, with my script or i needed to change it i remember getting very depressed at one point and being like maybe i'm not meant to be here you know and uh, reema who uh, was at that time making honeymoon travels uh you know she actually came from assam didn't know anyone made a movie like 4 years before me i mean so much for nepotism made a movie 4 years before me while i was sitting and struggling and she told me which i actually put into a dialogue in luck by chance she told me are you here to work with these actors and i was like no and she's she's like exactly so it doesn't matter if they're in your film you're here Who cares for bigger what they things think? yeah you're here to make movies yeah so if so and so doesn't think that this movie is good or so and so doesn't want to act in your movie it's really irrelevant because they are irrelevant and that's true they, nobody's relevant except you you know in that journey at that point and i put that in my movie actually i wrote that dialogue in but i remember that really clearly because i really was like back to getting me back into you getting know, focused centered yeah you didn't storyboard this film though you did a storyboard for zindagi na milegi yeah see i do storyboards only for sequences that require other directors like so or action or vfx you know things that are specific that are technical and therefore you not need to know the frame so i storyboarded the underwater i storyboarded because you can't be random with that stuff i storyboarded the bulls because it was action storyboarded the skydiving because i had a dp i needed to you know be very clear on how we are telling that story so i storyboard those things but not the whole film no no i can't you don't do that at all i can't it's too boring i mean if i storyboard it and someone else might as well shoot it no fun on set <laughs> you know I, i i i have an idea i sit with my dp and i uh, break it down so i know design wise how i want to shoot something and how i feel but that is my base and that is my confidence and that it makes me secure then i get to set and then i block it with the actors and 80% of the ch- time everything changes once you're on set yeah because it's another it, the alchemy is different you know you are actors you have look a location you have uh, you know suddenly walls are there they are there they are moving their process comes into play the dp has 10 ideas where is the sun where is you know no, right. it just changes everything it just moves yeah so what was the first day of shoot and what was the first scene we shot in chiplun uh, we shot the part where they go for the outdoor shoot the first uh, shot of my film was dimple kaparia my goddess i love her she was so yeah good. so it was her close up so she'll always be my fave because that was her first shot and the first scene was uh, her a nikki and a vikram on the dining table where they've slept together the night before that was ah. the first scene we shot and she's saying you've got bags under yeah, your eyes yes that was the first scene we shot now by then zoya you had already for many years been a uh, production assistant direction assistant mm. casting director did you already know where to place the camera were you clear on all of that directing is weird like i mean i you do short films in film school and stuff but it's not the same you don't know if you can direct till you direct really i i mean you know you want to direct you think you can direct but you'll know it when you do it and more than being able to do it is you don't know if you're going to dig the process till you go through the process you know what i mean because it is a process so I, I, you don't know if you have that stamina to actually do it like you be i had worked with my dp so i knew where to put the camera and stuff like that those things are simple because everyone's there to you to know you, you have a technical crew it's just i don't know how to explain it it's just that you have to know i think the most important thing when you're directing is perspective on the story what is your take what are you saying what does it mean that, that i think that's what you need everything else it just comes yeah really yeah yeah everything else is simple like most of the directors you see the, all the good ones are someone with a point of view yeah the others don't have a point of view so how does it matter how great their shots are they don't have a point of view only in the story nobody cares you don't respond to that this so there's so many things that are complete genius in the film starting of course with that opening credits okay which were just fabulous but the little little moments you know uh, there's a moment where uh, dimple kapadia the heroine's mother tells her daughter to touch the producer's feet um, romi rolly marvelous performance by rishi kapoor and her outfit is so tight yeah. and so small that she can barely 
bend down okay yeah. then at at one point uh, rishi kapoor's character looks at the uh, doesn't look at the mom but it, it tells says about her that she's a crocodile in chiffon yeah. uh, where did these observations come from was the were these people you knew of course i mean look you know like i mean i've grown up here so you just keep looking at people and i mean the heroine's mummy is like a legendary Legend. yeah, yeah. character i've seen it i've seen women in like little dresses going peripona <laughs> like from there cuz obviously they can't bend and it's very funny you know it's stuff like that so yeah. you've seen it around and you you just tick 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 you just keep collecting stuff when you're a writer you're like a scavenger you know so you just and way way before kangana ranaut called out nepotism luck by chance did it yeah. i mean there is so much conversation in that film about star kids about expectations yeah. about the mummy i mean there's that one frame where where this girl is standing against this massive portrait of her mother yeah. that says it all yeah. right uh, uh, also the little things you know you have that lovely moment where all the heroes are saying no to the producer yeah. and abhishek of course says oh daddy says hello yeah. you know it's just it's this marvelous kind of uh, pricking at how insular and and incestuous the film industry is it is because but at the end of the day you know like it is that it is all that but at the same time what is it it's not some kingdom right it's an infrastructure that's what it is tomorrow if you come from somewhere you have that much money and you want to make a film you can make a film if you want to come and launch your daughter and you have a massive business and you want to make the movie and put your daughter in it it's available to you it's an infrastructure now people that work within the industry big now i know you i know your husband tomorrow i know your kid do you know what i mean yeah. it, 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 this is how it is we just know each other because we work with each other does doesn't make it like you know it, it's still open right. i i don't believe that it's this like closed space and i'm from here and i i'm born here bred here i know everyone i had access that my advantage was i had access to everybody you know you had everyone in the film i had everyone in the film but nobody does your film because they know you sure i mean i took 7 years to make a movie nobody does your film because they know you they do the film because they want they like the film or not yeah yes do i have my foot in the door of course i have my foot in the door but i can't apologize for that i'm not going to apologize that my parents were in the industry sorry i'm not going to say sorry for that no no you but know? in the film zoya you call it out but you also have a moment where karan johar is explaining to uh, uh, Ritik Roshan's character who's this big star about how outsiders get in because no star will do a role that they think of is course, too edgy of course and people get in in a particular way but you also call it out in a sense because see you call it out because it's there i find this whole thing really funny this whole nepotism because i mean it's like look at us look at this what exists in your country exists in the industry sure it's as simple as that yeah. culturally whatever's happening what exists in india exists in the industry people keep asking me there is sexism in the industry i mean where do you think we live you think we are an island look at within the society around whatever is there is in the industry we have come from a culture where people had to do what their parents did right so you were waking up in 2018 and saying why is there nepotism i mean like no shit sherlock you know what i'm saying of course there is nepotism but tell me during the shoot So yeah you've got your father writing dialogue he's of course a legend mm. you've got your brother as co-producer and hero who he's already a very successful director and actor post rock yeah. on um uh, how did you at that moment find your voice i mean did you, were there moments where you sort of not felt intimidated but just you know these are already two such established figures you know luckily for me i've been brought up in an environment where i was always asked my opinion my brother and me we were very, we were asked to be vocal from a very young age were engaged into conversations about things uh and it was important so i was very comfortable with them and and respected you know in the sense that It, it just because you haven't made a movie doesn't mean they won't respect you right you know what i'm saying like so it, i i didn't feel a struggle i didn't and it was and it i mean we are all writers there is a sensitivity to the other person and to their work and at the end of the day if it's your story you know best how to tell it and so when you know, if there was a creative conflict it was your decision eventually yes because i'm the director even with your dad of course really yes of course you can argue with him uh, totally <laughs> 
and you must. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you have to, at the end of the day, make a film with your conviction. You can't go by anyone else's instinct. It has to be yours. You know? What was it like, Zoya, to direct Rishi Kapoor? Who was, what, the first person you signed on for this movie? And who believed in it before anybody else did? Yeah. But he's intimidating even on a good day, yeah. right? Yeah. What was it like to direct him? Crazy. He's, but he's lovely also, you know, he was very supportive. He couldn't believe that I couldn't get an actor. He just couldn't believe He loved it. the script. He loved it. He just couldn't believe I couldn't find an actor. He was always on. He was like, whenever you make this film, I'm there. But you know, he, he and me had the biggest fights. We used to fight with each other, scream. Loudly. Yeah, 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 of course. Screaming. And he You're was, screaming at Rishi Kapoor? Screaming means, sir, let me do what I'm doing. <laughs> Please listen to me. Keep quiet. He would be like, this was... Constant. Okay, and he, he told me once, I've worked with 150 filmmakers. You're the first female filmmaker I'm working with. That's and right. May this be the last. I was like, he used to just make me laugh. So you just start laughing. Then I'd be like, sir, come on, I love you. You know that, right? Then he'd be embarrassed and be like, okay, okay, what do you want? You know what I mean? So it's like that. Yeah, you just have to handle him. But he's so good. He and he so pretends that he doesn't like, he's all spontaneous and he's completely prepared. Completely prepped, he knows all his lines, he's bang on time, he's a pro. So those things you don't worry about, you know what I mean? He's very involved in how he looks. He's got a lot of energy on a set, you know, and that's very good for the crew also. It charges people up, you know? You know, there's this lovely scene where he starts to cry. Uh, because Zafar, the hero, won't call yeah. him back. And it's just so heartbreaking, you know? No matter how much you've been laughing at him until then, it really is, is sort of... Yeah. Anguish to, to see him break down and say, you know, okay, ab maza nahi raha. Yeah. Uh, how many takes did that scene take? Not many actually. I think he must have done about three takes, four takes. He's he's very he's very good. You know, actually with him, uh his first two takes are you know, he gets it. Those are the it. best takes usually. Yeah, but I feel very bad when I see that scene because I ruined it. Why? Because I should not have put any background music on that scene. When I looked at it later, because he was so good in it, I feel like I you underlined it too much. No, I feel like I took away from him. You know what I mean? I should have left it. I think it would have just rung more if it was just naked. You know what I mean? I think I, I screwed it up. You have to cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> you also, Zoya, had all these people on as your ADs on the crew. You know, Shakun Batra, yeah. Nitya Mehra, Reema, of course. What was that like? To have all these amazing young people with Nitya, you? Nitya, they did work on it. Shakun came to me. Shakun was my DA. But then before I could he's start... He's in the credits. Shooting, he's in the credits because he did a, a bunch of prep. But uh, my brother stole him for dawn because Farhan lost his DA and then kidnapped Shakun. So I lost Shakun Batra, who I loved and hired. Yeah, I'm Shakun's movie mommy. Um, <laughs> And Nitya was already, uh, she had, was working on Laksh. So she was in and out helping, but she wasn't on the crew. Reema was, of course, doing all the second unit. But it was great to have this kind of energy around. It's really, it's always good. LP, you know LP? Yes. She was the first lady, yeah. Was there anything, Zoya, that kept you up at night? No. You slept soundly? Perfectly. You're too tired when you're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, like, time to be up. You know, your prep, you realize how ready you were. You know, like day one on set, I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. You're home. Yeah, I was born to do this. And then it's your first film, everything's a joy. You're really not stressed. I mean, I wasn't stressed, but then I also had very good producers. You know, Ritesh and Farhan really had my back. So I was fine. You know, Raju had said to me uh, when we were shooting my first film with him that uh, there's a feeling of abandon. And, and sort of not caring because you're just so happy that you're making your film that you can never replicate. Yeah. No matter how successful yeah. you become. Is that true? That is true. Because it, the process changes. How it's does not it change? the same. What happens? It's not that pure. It's just not the same thing. Why? Do you start to worry about box office? It's like that. You do think about box office, but it's not just that. It's like, you know, my first film is like your actor's late. You, I don't care, I have an actor. That is never going to happen again. You know what I mean? Or like your set's not ready and I have a set. It's my set. You're so grateful. Exactly. You know, those things are never going to... Everything is new. Every process is the first time. And like when Luck by Chance came out, I didn't even ask anyone how it's done. Because I was just getting great reviews. People were sending me flowers. Actors were calling me. Like, the, I mean, it was, I didn't even bother to ask, is it making any money? And when I did five days later, I realized it's making no money. 
but I had no idea because I was it, it just didn't matter and now I'm thinking about the box office even before the release and so that's kind of sad and there's no way to go back to that innocence no you can't first one is special what was the the emotion you felt when you saw the whole film for the first time it's pretty amazing honestly i i don't think like if you want to make movies or you want to be a filmmaker i don't think there's a better feeling than watching your film on the big screen there's nothing being in that theater because you're alone you know the first time and it's playing and you're like it's like having a baby no yeah i loved it it's just you know of course you're looking at the grade and all that you know the, at the color correction and stuff like that but it's just like you made it and at that time we shot films so it was like reels you know it's a, it's another trip you're in in the opening credits your name of course is um, at the kismat talkies theater yeah. which has a house full sign but like you just said this film didn't make money um how did you handle that i'm telling you you're so naive i was really surprised i'm like but if everyone likes it how can it not make money and if every critic has given it a good review why aren't people going to watch it you know and people like the critics pushed it they didn't just give it a good review they actually consistently wrote about it which is not normal you know people were really good about it but uh, i saw you know those things those vox pops like they do that outside yeah. theaters and stuff and there were these college girls and they were like i don't understand what's happening in this movie what happened in the end i didn't understand it then you're just like there's no hope what do you do then i'm sitting in a, i was coming back from bangalore and the film was in the theater and there was a girl behind me watching it on her dvd so i have fired her i said don't watch my film so but but so did it break your heart that yeah, it course. didn't gonna it did of course absolutely. absolutely how how long did it take you to get over that not very because i started writing and i was like i can't like and i remember farhan telling me like you're still okay because you either make a good film that makes no money and you survive you make a bad film that makes a lot of money and you survive you know you can't make a bad film that makes no money correct because then you're doomed you know what i'm <laughs> saying so he's like you're still floating so you you can go for it again and then i, I because i had done an ensemble and there was so many people in it i was like my next film is going to be three boys in a car in mexico so i already knew i wanted to do a road trip and we started writing that immediately because luck by chance released in 2009 2010 i shot zindagi so i was already writing and in prep so did it did it though make you examine your creative choices in the sense that you know when i saw luck by chance again i i was amazed at for almost 10 years ago you know how subtle the film is and how quietly you're saying things did you at that time think that maybe this is just too understated and maybe i need to ramp it up did you have any of those no. kind of creative no not at all no i did have certain calls about uh, certain things that i can't talk about because it irritated people so i can't talk about it but i some certain <laughs> creative calls did wake me up but actually after luck by chance when i look back now i am much more frugal with my background you know what i mean i felt like i was a little ramped up in luck by chance in certain places which i'll never do again so you kept your voice irrespective of what happened with the film yeah yeah i yeah. mean i hope so i yeah. i think so i don't know you know i i don't know you didn't ever think sort of doubt yourself in any way no 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 why should i doubt myself when i can doubt everyone else <laughs> i'm kidding that's a joke <laughs> no i didn't doubt myself I, i because i like the film so i mean i see my mistakes i see what i did wrong can you do you go back and revisit your yeah, work yeah i i i cringe i can't watch my stuff really i cringe because i can only see my screw ups Like I know certain things went well. I know the scene was good. Like I know that in my films like this is good. I like this scene. You know this turned out okay. But I also know where shit. Like you know you can look at it and be like So are you a very different director today from the person who made that film? I think so. How? In I, I think I'm easier. I think About I'm what? easier. I think I'm easier in the sense like I would prep like i would go through my scene and i would prep every night and look at my shots and and all that i can read my scene i'm i'm, I'm easy to go on a set and like but is that flow. is that the confidence that comes with experience i think so i don't uh, feel the need to constantly read my script also i kind of have it graft i mean i'm saying all this and then gully boy will come out and you'll be like you should have read the script <laughs> who knows when <laughs> yeah maybe. i might, yeah maybe 
<laughs> but I, I don't, I'm not cons. I don't have my script with me all the time. You know what I mean? I'm easy. I feel much more comfortable in that sense. Uh, has anything changed in the way you direct actors? No. You're still in the same way. Yeah, so I handling. don't think. Yeah, I mean, you learn how to handle them better. You know, you learn how to. Uh, you learn what to take seriously, what to ignore. You learn uh, how to collaborate in a better way. You learn how to bring things out. So you learn those things. But my basic rules with actors have stayed the same. And if you had to give advice to somebody who's about to embark on their first film, what would it be? Be clear about your point of view because only that will make it different. Like put yourself in there. Like be honest. Don't don't do anything you think the audience will like and that one will like because we don't know what anyone will like. You know, this way at least you're guaranteed one person in the audience. <laughs> do what you like. Like really stick to your. Why are you telling the story? What is it about the story that moves you? And make sure that happens to the audience. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, I think. And that's true, no matter. There's no what. only way. That's the beauty of film. There's any, you know. There's so many ways of making a film, but this isn't my way. Yeah, because how can you predict what anybody will like? You can't. You can't. Because everyone will be making hits. But so when you are making that first film, how can you be completely sure of your own instincts? Is that hard to be? No, I don't think so. I think if you are clear. When you are clear about what is this film about, and I don't mean what is this film about in terms of uh, it's about a girl who struggles to make. No, that's not what I'm talking about. For me, luck by chance is about self-esteem. That's what the film's about, you know. So when I look at that film, then everything comes down to that. So this person is a superior. This person's an inferior, you know, in terms of their complexes, in terms of where they see themselves in the outside world, as opposed to when they see themselves when they're alone. So everything takes on a filter, and then it just leads up to that. So thematically, what is your film about? Like Zindagi, yes, it's about three boys on a road trip, but thematically, what is it about? Thematically, it's about freedom. It's about being able to screw up and survive it. That's what it's about. It, you know what I mean? So. You have to go back to your. For me, what is your film about? What's the core? Yeah, and if you know that, then I think everything becomes clear because everything has to add up to that. Nice. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Welcome. And, and congratulations. As usual, you. I have rambled. No, not at all. And no, don't take it off. Getting abused underneath. <laughs> Keep quiet. Every <laughs> Anupama Chopra interview I do, I get abused. <laughs> This was lovely. Thank you. Hi, if you like this video, subscribe to Film Companion and log on to filmcompanion.in.